A new rebellion in the Russian Federation is possible, but it requires a leader on the ground. One of the candidates for this role is currently in Ukraine. The head of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, in an interview with Forbes, stated that Ukraine knew about the preparation of the Wagner Group mutiny six months in advance. Unfortunately, we are not seeing such impulses now. If we are talking about conditional rebellions of ethnic groups, for this we need a leader on the spot. There is a good leader. He is with us, but he is gaining opportunities. Then we can talk about something. Of course, nothing ever happens. The Wagner rebellion was prepared very early on. The chief Ukrainian intelligence officer noted. According to him, the head of the Wagner group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, was a complex personality, an ultra-patriot, and Alexander Lukashenko played on his patriotic feelings. He was preparing to enter the Kremlin. Mentally, he was going to actually save Russia. But they explained to him, if you enter, no one here will be able to cheat you. But by doing so, you will not immediately save Russia, but will tear it apart. After all, at the same time, you will be in the Kremlin and the nominal leadership of the state will be somewhere else. Budanov explained, recall on the night of June the 24th, 2023, the head of the Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, marched on Moscow to overthrow Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu. The Wagnerites did not reach the Russian capital, but stopped 200 kilometers from the Russian capital. Prigozhin went to negotiate with Alexander Lukashenko, who, at Putin's request, assumed the role of mediator in the conflict. As a result, Prigozhin fled to Belarus, having received a guarantee of safety for his life. On August the 23rd, the plane of the leader of the Wagner PMC, Yevgeny Prigozhin, crashed in the Tver region of Russia. No one survived. A powerful earthquake struck off Japan's southern coast, triggering a tsunami advisory, the Japan Meteorological Agency said. The Japan Meteorological Agency said the quake registered a preliminary magnitude of 7.1 and was centered off the eastern coast of Japan's southern main island of Kyushu at a depth of about 30 kilometers. The agency said tsunami waves of up 50 centimeters were detected along parts of Kyushu's southern coast and the nearby island of Shikoku about half an hour after the quake struck. But authorities in Japan have now told that there is a risk of a rising sea level of 1 meter on the Pacific coast of the western islands of Kyushu and Shikoku. The exact magnitude, epicenter, and depth of the quake might be revised within the next few hours or minutes as seismologists review data and refine their calculations, or as other agencies issue their report. Based on the preliminary seismic data, the quake should have been felt by everybody in the area of the epicenter. In those areas, dangerous ground shaking occurred with the potential to inflict moderate to heavy damage to buildings and other infrastructure, Japan Meteorological Agency said. Japan, located within the Pacific Ring of Fire, is considered one of the most earthquake-prone regions globally. The Asian island country accounts for about 20% of global quakes of magnitude 6.0 or greater, with seismometers recording an event every five minutes on average, forcing the country to invest greatly in making its infrastructure and its population quake-resistant. On March 11, 2011, Japan suffered the most powerful earthquake. Dubbed the Great East Japan Earthquake, with a magnitude of 9.1, it triggered powerful tsunami waves that may have reached heights of up to 40.5 meters. An earthquake on January 1 in Japan's north-central region of Noto left more than 240 people dead. Thank <laughs> you. 